up to another good, good morning. Time to go. Oh, we are all. My name is Amanda Bolchafen. I work at the Lane Community Technology Center in downtown Hamilton, Ohio. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a custom postcard. We'll be using a program called Canva and another one called Adobe Illustrator. After we design our postcards, we'll be using the Tech Center's Epson Large Format Printer and GraphTech Cutter to print and cut our designs. After that, just add a little glue and sand down the edges and you're ready to send your postcard. We're gonna start out in Canva. Canva is really powerful web-based design software that offers stock photos, graphics, templates, and even design courses. Some of the assets and options in Canva are reserved for people with the paid version, but you can start a free account now by clicking sign up. Now, I already have a paid account, so I'm going to click login right here. Okay, so you can see a bunch of my designs on my home screen. Your home screen will look a little different, so keep that in mind. We know that we want to make a postcard, so in the big search bar at the top of the screen, we're just going to type in the word postcard and then press enter. And this brings us to a long list of templates. You're going to choose the one you like the best and click on it. Now, one thing to note is that you want one that is two-sided. So if you hover your mouse over, you're going to see that says one of two and two of two. That is how you know it's two-sided. So just kind of scroll down and choose one you want. And I kind of like this one, so I'm just going to click on it. And then I'm going to choose customize this template. Okay, and now this brings us to a page where we can edit. Do be aware that over here, this is just an ad, so you can just close this ad part. We're gonna be working over here. Customizing is pretty easy. First, let's start with the text. I want this postcard to be about last year's trip to Puerto Rico, so I'm just going to click on the words and edit them so that they relate to that trip. If you want to further customize your text, you can click on the font and details here at the top, or you can click on this text tool here to find cool color and font combinations. Now let's add photos. Just click elements over here, choose photos, and then type your desired text into the search bar and hit enter. I'm going to type Puerto Rico, but alternatives like beach, island, ocean, or vacation might work too. When you find a photo that you like, just drag and drop it into the desired spot. When you click on them, you'll find that all of these elements are customizable, including photos. You can adjust these to your heart's content, but remember that anything with a crown icon will require a paid account. Let's say I just want to adjust and make this a little brighter. I would hit this adjust here. And let's say I want to turn up the brightness a little. And maybe heighten the contrast. Let me lower the contrast a little actually. And then maybe bring up the saturation. So you have all kinds of options there. You have filters that you can work with. You have special effects. It's really up to you what you want to do. I encourage you to take your time and play around with it. One of the ones that you're probably going to use the most often is actually crop. And the way that works is when you click on it here, you can actually resize it and then move it within this frame here and then when you click enter it's going to save those changes within your frame okay but let's say you don't want to use stock photos you want to use your own photos click upload over here and then choose the photos you think you might want to add and let's say here i actually kind of want to make this one bigger so i'm going to click on this lady here and i'm just going to delete i'm going to delete this frame i'm going to click on here and i'm going to make this bigger and then I'm going to center this up. And to do that, I'm going to hit this more button. And then I'm going to click align to page and I'm going to center it this way. So now it's in the center. And if you wanted to give this a nice little drop shadow, you can just, well, for this particular instance, I would just click on this and duplicate it, but you can add a shape too. So over here under elements, if you go back, we're going to go to lines and shapes. 
and I'm just gonna grab a regular rectangle here, put it right here, make it a little bigger. I can change the color to match that one. And I can send it backward so it's behind my photo. So I hit layer, send backward, and I can also uh, center these. So I'm gonna click on my photo here, hold down shift, and I'm gonna click on my backdrop. And then if I click here on more, align elements, and I'm just gonna center these. So now they're centered together. And now I can group these, hitting group here, make it a little smaller, and then center that up. Also, postcards, they want a midline here, a black midline. So I'm gonna use lines here. I'm just gonna pull this over, or rather click on it, and then I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. If I click here, I can choose my line weight. So I'm actually gonna take this down to a one, make it nice and thin. I'm gonna pull this right over here, and I'm gonna pull this up, and again, I'm going to align. There we go, looking pretty smooth, right? Now the post office will want this midline to be either black or gray, so I think I'm gonna click on it and choose gray here because I think that goes a little better with my design. So to download, it's actually not quite as intuitive as you might think. You're going to click share, and then you're going to click download, and we are actually going to choose PNG. This is correct. You want PNG to be selected, and you can go ahead and do all pages, that's fine, and then hit download. Now we're actually going to have to open up Adobe Illustrator for the next part of the project. We need to use Illustrator because it allows us to designate two different kinds of colors, process colors and spot colors. A process color is anything that our Epson printer will print. These will be visible on the finished product. A spot color is invisible to us, but visible to the cutter. Spot colors define our cut lines. Our cutter allows us to perform different cut options, like shallow kiss cuts, perforated cuts, and contour cuts. In Illustrator, we can give our cut lines names like cut perf or cut kiss to help the machine to define and identify different kinds of cuts. Here we are in Adobe Illustrator. This program is a little pricey. If you live near Hamilton, Ohio, you can come to the Tech Center to use our licensed copy. Otherwise, you may want to check with your local library, or if you're a student, check to see if your school has an account that you can use. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click open, and then I'm just going to navigate over here to this pink and blue postcard, the one I just downloaded, and I'm going to select both of these. I can do that just by clicking and holding and dragging to select both. And now I'm going to click open. You can see that these are two separate images on two separate tabs. So I'm just going to select the one on this tab. You can just do control or command A to select everything, or you can click and drag and select everything that way. I'm gonna copy it, so command or control C, and then I'm gonna click on my first one here, and I'm gonna paste, so command or control V as in Victor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this until I get that little line there. See those lines are telling me that it's touching on the edge and it's lined up in the center. And that's what you want. Now I'm going to need to make a cut line. If you're enjoying this video and you want more like it, don't forget to subscribe or even leave a comment. I try to answer all questions in a timely manner. You can also give us a shout out on Facebook. It helps us spread the word about all the cool resources and services we offer. Now I'm going to need to make a cut line. I need to tell my machine that I'm going to cut all along the outside edge. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to layers. And you know my layers menu isn't looking exactly like what I want. So I'm gonna close these color guides here. So I'm just gonna click on this plus sign here, right there, where if you hover over it, it says create a new layer. It'll automatically name this layer too. I'm just going to double click on it 
and I'm going to name this cut. So with my cut layers selected, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click and drag until these anchors snap into place. Okay, good. I have a white filled in rectangle when I really just want the outline. So what do I do? I'm actually just going to click on properties right here and I'm going to click on fill and I'm going to click this none button here. And then over here on stroke, I'm going to click that. And I actually want to add a new swatch. So I think I'm going to click this color mixer and it doesn't matter what color I choose. I can choose any color I want. And then if I go back here to swatches, now I can click this new swatch button. So I'm going to click on new swatch and here I'm going to choose RGB. I'm going to click OK here and then I'm going to switch that to stroke. All right, so I'm going to pull up my swatch options and do you see how there's a little error here? I'm just going to click that to correct it. And here where it says process color, this is the really important part. I'm going to click that and I'm going to choose spot color. And then the swatch name, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to call it cut perf. Just like that. And I'm going to hit OK. And now we need to add a line right where these two join. What we want to do there is add a line and we are just going to add a little score line. We're not going to cut it completely. We're just going to indent it so that we can fold our postcard in half and glue it. So if I go up here and I click window and then I choose workspace, I'm on essentials. I'm going to switch that to essentials classic. And you see how that opens up a few more options for us. So now my line tool is right here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to bring it over here to my midline. I'm going to click. Holding down shift, I'm going to drag. But now I actually want to give this a different swatch, a different spot color. So first I'm going to click on it, holding down shift. I'm going to make sure it's the right size. It'll snap right to my other line. And now we're going to go back and we're going to change the color. So I'm going to click on stroke here. We are going to add a new swatch. I don't care what color it is. Fix the error. Spot color is good. And we are going to call this cut kiss because a kiss cut is the kind that does not go completely through, but just sort of scores or barely touches the outer edge. You also use this a lot for things like stickers when you're going to peel off the top layer. There we go. Cut kiss and then click OK. Okay, so we are going to click layers right here and then we're going to click here to target. Making sure that our line and our rectangle are both in our cut layer. So we have our layers and now we need to adjust our artboard. So to do that, I'm going to click here where it says artboard and I might have to zoom out a little bit. There we go. So I just did that by holding command and the minus button a couple times. I believe on a windows you can hold down alt and use your scroll bar. And then you're going to take these edges and you're going to pull them in. You want a little bit of space on each side and then a little more space above and below. And the reason for that is you're going to add when it prints some registration marks and they're going to go here, 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 and here, and then there's going to be a barcode here and here. So you want to make sure that there's enough room on the artboard for your registration marks and barcode. Okay, so now you have everything ready. You have your cut lines selected. You have your artboard sized. Now you're going to save. So we're going to go to file, save as, and I'm just going to call this PR postcard. And now I'm actually going to save this as EPS right there, Illustrator EPS. And I'm going to click save. Go ahead and choose continue. And then in this menu here, just click OK. 
If you're using the Tech Center's printing and cutting services, staff will do the printing and cutting for you. It is absolutely required that you correctly add your own cut lines and email us the file as an EPS file. Otherwise, the file may print without cut information and you will need to cut your piece by hand. If you need assistance with this step, please set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation and staff will be happy to assist. Here at the Tech Center, staff first loads the desired material. These are industrial sized rolls, so for safety it often requires more than one person to load and unload the machine. To save material, we will use software called RipQ to queue up and arrange a number of different designs on the same roll. We'll select our cutter and a few more job properties and wait for the software to process the design. We then print the project and wait for it to dry. When the project is dry, we load the material onto the cutter. Then we open software called Cut Server, where we adjust our settings and send the job to the cutter. If all goes according to plan, the cutter cuts the project according to the parameters set within the file. In this case, a kiss cut for the score and a perf cut for the edge. For post-processing, you may want to use some sandpaper to file down any ragged edges. Then you'll need to glue the two halves together. Simply fold the edges, line them up, brush on a little bit of glue, and clamp. Make sure the edges are glued securely. You may want to finish the edges with a touch more sandpaper. The post office requires finished edges for postcards. We advise the use of bookbinding glue or other strong paper-specific glue. We have glue, foam brushes, clamps, and sandpaper in the Tech Center's makerspace. If you live near Hamilton, Ohio and would like to make an appointment to use the space, simply call 513-785-2727 to set up an appointment. Otherwise, you will need to finish your design at home.